Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Bet Online All Access. I'm Ali Melendez. Well, a big week in sports is on tap, and kicking it all off is the 2022 NFL Draft. I'll be joined by Giraffe Network's Jamie Eisner in just a few minutes to get the lowdown on what we can expect from Commissioner Roger Goodell when he steps to the podium in Vegas. Aside from the obligatory booing, of course, I mean, why do they do that? He looks like such a nice guy. Anyway, if you're headed to Vegas for the draft, go easy on him, will ya? We'll get to that in a moment. First, though, let's take a quick look at some other happenings in the Bet Online universe. You know the deal, let's do it. The Kentucky Derby is a little over a week away. We, of course, have Kentucky Derby futures listed epicenter, heads the fields currently, followed by Zandon, and a relatively recent addition with Kaba. The final field of 20 will be drawn on May 3rd. The Stanley Cup playoffs get underway this coming week as the boys ratchet things up in what is always the most exciting time of year on the ice. We at BetOnline have the Colorado Avalanche as the favorites to hoist Lord Stanley's Cup. And finally, the excitement of the 2022 NFL Draft has us all thinking fall, pumpkin spice, lattes, sweater weather. Wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> I need a little beach time first, so summer, you can stay. Anyway, BetOnline has win totals up for all 32 NFL teams, so be sure to take a look to see what the expectations are for your favorite team. So the run for the Roses, NBA, Stanley Cup playoffs, NFL futures, whatever it is, you can find it all at BetOnline. BetOnline, where the game starts. So each year, the NFL Draft offers each team, even those perennially picking at or near the top, hello Jacksonville, the opportunity to build success from within. These draft choices will help make or break a franchise's future success, or in some cases, well, let's just say I hope you haven't been a Jets fan for the last, well, since, you know, Super Bowl three. <clears throat> anyway, here to help us figure out what to expect from the 2022 NFL Draft is Jamie Eisner from the Draft Network. Jamie, welcome to BetOnline All Access. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, we're out here in Las Vegas getting prepped for a wild week of the NFL Draft because I don't think there's ever been more unpredictability at the top in recent memory than what we're seeing here for 2022. Definitely. Well, let's get right into it with the first overall pick. So for the longest time, we've been hearing Michigan's Aiden Hutchinson. But lately, recently, I've been hearing a lot about Georgia's Trayvon Walker as the first overall pick. So BetOnline has his odds set at minus 180. Help me out here. Is it going to be Hutchinson? Is it going to be Walker? And why the sudden shift? So I'm going to go with Walker here, but it's interesting because I, I know this switch might seem very sudden to people that are kind of really getting into draft mode over the last few days. But inside the draft community, this switch has been happening for weeks. And really the dime kind of turned about a couple of weeks ago where even with plus odds on the board at Bet Online, there was a strong indication that uh, Trevon Walker was going to be not only in play for Jacksonville, but was the favorite uh, behind the scenes to be taken there. And that's what I still believe is happening here. There's a lot of conversation about arm length for guys that Trent Baalke, the general manager of the Jaguars, likes, and the differences in that element between Trevon Walker and Michigan's Aiden Hutchinson. But uh, to me, at this, this has been a steady grind and a steady change behind the scenes over the course of the last month or so. It just felt like a shock on Monday morning when people woke up wherever they were and saw those odds flip on them when they went to bed. But this has been coming for some time now. I think those that have really been dialed into the draft aren't as shocked as everybody else was on Monday. Let's talk about wide receivers. We have a lot of really talented wide receivers in the group this year. Now, Bet Online has set an over-under for six being drafted in the first round. Do you agree with that number? Do you not? Why? And also, who do you think the first wideout to be drafted will be? Well, it's interesting because you think of some of the names that are going to be potentially come off the board on Thursday night. Guys like Drake London, guys like Garrett Wilson, Jamison Williams, Chris Olave, Traylon Burks, Jahan Dotson. Those seem to be the six that a lot of expect to go on the first round. Then you're going to see it sprinkled. Does the guy like Sky Moore sneak in? Uh, you know, I, I, I just there's a few other guys. You know, George Pickens has been a name that's popped up for some, but you know, there are a lot of people that like his talent, but there's some other off the field concerns with him as well that might push him down the board. There are a lot of wide receiver needy teams, particularly at the very back. You think of teams like Green Bay that have two picks late, Kansas City that have two picks late, and maybe even a team like Tennessee at 26 that might want a wide receiver. Uh, I feel pretty confident we're going to get six. Not sure we're going to get seven. So without the hook there on either side of it, I'm not sure that's what I love. 
but I really like some things on the first wide receiver taken because Garrett Wilson is the odds on favorite right now. I've kind of been fading him this entire draft cycle. I think there are, it's a lot closer at the top for NFL teams and what the betting market has indicated. Uh, there's a lot of rumblings about a receiver like Drake London going to the Atlanta Falcons at eight, being the first receiver off the board. Uh, Jamison Williams is TDN's wide receiver one in the class. And it seems like the concerns with him coming off the ACL injury have lessened as we got closer to the draft. He has a very real chance of being the first wide receiver off the board. I would go with either one of those guys getting plus odds versus laying uh, to take Garrett Wilson as the first receiver off the board. Yeah, absolutely. And Jamie, we have to talk about quarterbacks. What is going on with them this year, right? That's crazy. What's happening? It's so weird. It's so weird. It's, it's, it's been a weird class from the beginning. And it's not shocking that we get, we've got to this point and there isn't a consensus QB1 and that a QB is not going to go first overall. We kind of knew this as, as the year started to progress. But what's really interesting is it's still really difficult to find spots for these guys. Like Malik Willis is a guy that is right now the favorite to be the first quarterback taken, but where is he going to go? Is he a guy that goes to Carolina at six? I don't think so. Seattle at nine? Maybe, but I doubt it. Does Pittsburgh trade up? Does New Orleans make another trade after the trade they made with Philadelphia to move up? Is, is there another team that gets QB needy that wants to move into the back part of the first round? It's really interesting because the, the number at two and a half, I, I would be surprised if we didn't get to three, but I could easily see a path where we get there. And, and as I did my predictive mock, it got really difficult to find QB landing spots. Like it wasn't easy at all. And you, know, you start to hear rumblings about, you know, does a guy like Desmond Ritter, uh, does, does Pittsburgh like him? Could he be a surprise pick for Tennessee? What about Sam Howell late in the first round? We've heard teams, there are certain teams that really like Matt Corral. So I think because this is the NFL, and at the end of the day, QBs rule all, we will get at least three quarterbacks in the first round. We might even sneak one into the top 10, even though the odds are not great on that as we sit here right now. Because if there's going to be a player position group that teams reach for, it's always the quarterback. You know, Jamie, it's so fascinating that you say three quarterbacks being drafted in the first round because, yeah, that's kind of a lot for this year, but in the past, we've seen more. So very interesting, very fascinating yeah. things going on in the draft this year. But I want to talk about some fascinating prop bets that we offer at Bet Online. Now, something that's been on my mind is the amount of offensive players being drafted in the first round. That's at 16 and a half and defensive players at 15 and a half. Would you agree with those numbers and why or why not? I like where those lines are set. Uh, I'm intrigued by the defensive player one because I feel like we're hearing a lot of conversation today about the limited number of first round grades teams have on players. And, and every single year, like there aren't 32 first round grades on players in a given year. It doesn't happen for most of these teams. So really any of these teams, but we're hearing numbers as low as 14 or 15 or 16 first round grades which means there's gonna be a lot of guys that kind of sneak into the back part of the first round that might be rated differently by certain teams versus what analysts or other teams may have. And that's where it gets interesting to me. And I think it's some of those defensive guys that could really be the one that drive up late in the class there, because I don't really see, aside from maybe one quarterback move up, I don't really see teams moving up if they wanted to in the back part of the first round. So I think the teams that are there are gonna stay there and they're gonna address some of those defensive needs with guys that they maybe either have high second round grades on or guys that maybe fell to them that they didn't expect. Jamie Eisner from the Draft Network, everyone. Jamie, thank you so much. We so appreciate your time. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Bet Online All Access. For everyone here, I'm Ali Melendez. Enjoy all of the sports action and remember, Bet Online, where the game starts.